I want to go home. What? I can't. I want to go home. But darling, what's the matter? What have I done? I want to go home. I never should have married you. Agnes! How can you? How dare you say such a thing? Well, what? I haven't said a thing all night long. Are you youth over? That's what you would like. And dressing me the whole night long with your hat on and your unwashed ears. <laughs> That's right, darling. That's it. You cry, my dearest. That's the spirit. <laughs> That's why you made me drink such a lot, taking nothing yourself why, all the time. Why, I've drunk at least three bottles. So what did you say? What did you say when you threw me on the bed? Threw? If I'm drunk, I'm drunk with happiness. That's what you said. But, darling, only a minute ago you I said so. I did not. Well, all the... Here, smell.
got on? My father's been wearing pajamas for ages. Oh, has he really? Well, I don't. Why have you changed? Why have you? <laughs> I? Oh. <sighs> I'm sleepy. <laughs> so am I. Well then, shall we? Why, yes, let's. All right, what side would you like? Oh, I, I don't care, really. Any side that suits you is all right with me. I think I'll take the far side because of the door. The door? Yes, because of breakfast, and in case somebody should knock, you could answer it. Oh, I see. <clears throat> What's this? What? This little pillow. Did you put that there? Of course not. What's it got written on it? God is love. Oh, how sweet. Mother must have done that. Oh, wasn't that lovely of her? Oh, yes, charming.
said I'd have a very happy married life. I'd live to a ripe old age, and she said everything would turn out all right. And was she naked? <laughs> of course not. She went house to house with a goat. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Are you comfy? Oh, yes. <laughs> not too cold. Oh. Heavens no, I'm simply boiling. <clears throat>
<laughs> You're a baby. Oh, that's right. Humiliate me. Lose no opportunity of reminding me that I'm the male animal that's done its duty and now can be dismissed. <laughs> yes, a drone. That's right. The only thing lacking is that you should devour me. The bees, you know. What's the matter? I'm afraid. But I'm not, Michael. Honestly, not a bit. I'm afraid of something else. What? Look at me. What did the doctor tell you? Oh, it's got nothing to do with the doctor, and it's got nothing to do with you either. It's got to do with me. But you're going to be all right, aren't you? I'd never be all right again if I'd lost you. What are you talking about? You've got me right here, haven't you? Oh, but your heart, that's gone. I wish I was lying in that cradle. Oh, you, oh, you can't be as stupid as all that. Oh, I'm sorry I brought the subject up. Whatever did I do with my shoes? Darling, do you mean to tell me you haven't noticed how I've tried every day, all day long, to prove to you how much I love you? And I don't see why I should. Listen, before that cuckoo pushes me out of the nest, I want to tell you once more that I love you. Love you just as you are. I thought I loved you when I married you, but that wasn't you at all. It was a romantic illusion. I loved a sort of fairy princess with a doll smile. Well, anyway, not a princess with hiccups and cold feet, scratching her stomach in her ah. sleep. I thought I was marrying a princess, and I woke up to find a friend, a wife. You know, sometimes when I lay awake longer than you with my arm around your shoulder and your head on my chest, I thought with pity of all those lonely men staring at the ceiling or writing poems. Pity and such happiness that I knew at that very moment it wouldn't last. Well, I was right, that's all. If you thought about a princess, I thought about a poet. Oh? <laughs> you didn't know that I had cold feet and that every now and again I get an attack of hiccups, did you? You don't do anything else the whole night long. What? Scratch your stomach and sniff and snort and smack your lips. But go on, go on. <laughs> and you lie listening to all this about waking me up. Yes, because I don't know anything in the world I'd rather listen to. Got anything to say to that? Yes, but I won't say it. Why not? Never mind, darling. Stay just as you are. Miserable, deserted, alone. Oh. You don't do anything else. Day and night but fuss over that child. Eight months now. Well, first it was knitting panties, then sewing dresses, and fitting out the lay, and rigging the cradle. And all this time you sat quietly in your corner, didn't you? Well, I retired into the background, as becomes a man who recognized that he is one too many. Angel, do you still not understand why I love you so much? You noticed how I blotted myself out? Did I? I didn't think you did. You helped me more than all model husbands put together. Without you, I would have been frightened to death for eight whole months. But I simply had no time. I believe you're teasing me. <laughs> I love you. Do you believe that? Of course. Must I prove it to you? Oh, no. I'm fully prepared to take your All word. right. If you like, we'll send the child to a home. What? And then we'll go and look at it every Sunday. Agnes, why do you tease me? <laughs> I'm not teasing you. I'm telling you the truth. Even if I had 20 children, you are my husband, and I would rather leave them as groundlings. <laughs> Ah. Uh, uh, Darling, what is it? Ah. Uh, oh, the doctor. For God's sakes, the doctor. Uh, the doctor, stay here. But, uh, Angel, Agnes, my love, I must do uh, something. For, for God's sakes, I must do something. You don't want to tell. Riding on a pony. Agnes. Stuck a feather in his head and caught a macaroni. Agnes. Vicky, what are you doing? Uh, I, th I thought you were going mad. Started to sing. Yes. The doctor said if those pains started, I should sing. That would help. I did it automatically. Are you all right now? Yes. Now you just sit there quietly. I'll get the doctor. No, Michael, you mustn't. He said we weren't to send for him until the pains came regularly. Regularly? But it won't be a minute. Please don't go away. I wish Mother were here. Oh, no. Don't worry. This is the most natural thing in the world. Uh, you, you just sit there quietly. I'll put some clothes on. And no, Mickey, please don't fuss. I wish it didn't have to happen so yes. soon. I'm not nearly ready for it yet. Well, I am, darling. Honestly, I am. I, I can't wait to go fishing with him if it's a boy and if it's a girl to... Well, to go for walks. <laughs>
state your rhythms. I won't have it for years. First, there'll be years of crying. Dying well, I don't mind. Cars. Really, I don't. I'll find something to do. I'll, I'll work. I'll, I'll go fishing alone. Uh, You'll never have uh, another one? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Now, why don't you go to bed? You go to bed. I'll finish dressing and make you a nice cup of tea, yes? No, no, thank you, darling. I think I'll stay right where I am. I haven't done nearly all the things I should have done. I still have the laundry out on the floor. Agnes, do got... stop worrying. As soon as I finish dressing, I'll go to the roof and take the washing in. Please don't leave me alone. Or am 
must I? Yes, yes, you must, and you shall hear it. Now. And don't interrupt me. There's only one person in this world who loves you in spite of what you are. You are mistaken. There is a person in this world who loves me because of what I am. And what are you, my darling? Ask her. Yes. Oh. Who is she? You don't know her. Is she young? No. How young? I'll be damned if I go on with this. You look like a corpse. A corpse? So pale, I mean. Agnes, I am not such a monster that I... No. Oh, sit down, Agnes. No. Please do sit it's down. Not Agnes! Me. What do you think? That I should faint in my 31st year because of something so ordinary? Ordinary? With two children? I didn't faint when Robert had the muffs, did I? Don't you think this is a little different? Oh, Michael, this belongs to the family medicine chat. I love her! It's human, isn't it? 
How do you come to know that? What? That it's human. Well, I'm a human being, aren't I? I guess I've never heard you talk like this before. What's the matter with you? Well, I might have my experiences too, mightn't I? Good night. Now, just a minute. I want to hear a little more about this. But I know it now. Yes, you do, but I don't. What sort of experiences are you referring to? Now, listen, my little friend. You have dismissed me without notice, and I haven't complained once, as any other housekeeper would have done. I have accepted the facts because I know that a human being is at the mercy of this feeling, however horrible and at the same time delicious it may be. Agnes! I really don't understand you. I'm not thwarting you in the least, and instead of you're going away happily and relieved that you... You might just answer one question before we finish this business. Have you... Aren't you going to be alone if I leave you? No. I've got the children, haven't I? That's not at all, sir. Now, you had better leave this room very quickly before you get to know a side of me that might surprise you a lot. I have, I'm afraid. I demand an answer. Have you a lover? Good night. <laughs> For eleven long years I have believed in you. You were the purest, no. noblest thing in my life. Good night. If you don't answer my question, you'll never see me again. Get out of here. No. All right. Then there's only one thing left to be done. What? What were you going to say just then? <laughs> Darling, believe me, I won't blame you for anything. Only please tell me. Where are you going? Would you mind calling a cab for me? Agnes! Please, Michael, I can't arrive there too late. It's such an embarrassing time already. Pass me my alarm clock, will you? No, I can't have been that mistaken about you. Only yesterday you said I had qualities. Excuse me. All right. It is a solution. I think I'm going to let you do this, do you? Gentlemen does not use force when a lady wishes to leave the room. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Now look, I put up with all the nonsense. Get out! 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 Get out!
started writing a new book. When? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. You haven't read me anything yet. Impossible. Well, I read it to her. Oh. And? Well, she liked it all right. She, she thought it rather, well, coarse. Horse? What kind of a sheep is she? Shall I get the manuscript? <clears throat> Tomorrow. No, now. Please. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.
Hey, are you asleep? Mm. Yes. Come on, darling. The only thing to think is little children grow up. Let's be glad she ended up so well. Thank God Robert is a boy. I couldn't stand to go through that a second time. To see my child abducted by such a... Oh well, love is blind. <clears throat> Michael? Yes? What is the matter with you? The whole day long you've been so, so strange. How? You aren't ill, are you? No. Oh, that's all right then. What did you want to say? Today is the first day of Lizzie's marriage. It is. And? And the last day of ours. Beg your pardon? I waited to tell you perhaps too long. I didn't want to spoil your fun. My fun? <laughs> yes, I haven't seen you so cheerful for ages. For your sake I have made a total fool of myself. <coughs> for your sake I have walked around all these days with the face of a professional comedian, with a flower in my buttonhole and death in my heart. Do you know what I would have liked to have done? To hurl my glass in the pie face of that boy, or to take my child under my arm and ask for that couple of parents-in-law. And now you start telling me you didn't want to spoil my fun. With the information that I'm going away. You are what? I'm going away. Huh? Away. How do you mean? Can't you help me just a little by understanding quickly what I mean? I'll say it to you plainly once, and please try to listen quietly. If you don't understand after having heard it once, I'll have to write it to you. But darling, we needn't make such a fuss about it. You want to have a holiday now that the children have left the house. What could be more reasonable? No, no need to announce it to me like an undertaker. Not for a holiday, Michael. Forever. You want to move into another house? I want to go away from you. From me? Yes. You want to visit friends or something? Please, darling, stop it. You knew ages ago what I meant. Please don't try and play for time. <coughs> Makes it all so difficult. But I don't know a damn thing. What have I done? Nothing, nothing. You are an angel. I am not. Agnes, what is the matter with you? I would appreciate it if you'd stop asking me what is the matter with me. There's never been anything the matter with me that couldn't be less the matter with me now. The only thing is I can't... Can't what? Die behind the stove like a domestic animal. Good heavens. Well, you wouldn't understand. You're a man. You'll be able to do whatever you like until you are seven. But my dear good I woman... I Today I stop being a mother. In a few years' time, perhaps next year even, I'll stop being a woman. And that's what you don't want. I can't help it. That happens to be the way of benevolent providence. Thing. But darling, then it's madness. I want to be a woman just once before I become a grandmother. Is that so unreasonable? Angel. For heaven's sake, stop <coughs> angeling me. You treat me as if I was sitting in a wheelchair already. I want to live. Can't you understand that? Lifelong, I have been a mother. My lifelong, I've had to be at somebody's beck and call. I've never been able to be really myself, completely, wholeheartedly. Never. From the very first day, you handcuffed me and gagged me and shut me in the dark. When I was still a child who didn't even know what it meant to be a woman, you turned me into a mother. But darling, you wanted Robert to have a Not mother. through Robert, not through Lizzie, through yourself, through your selfishness. I didn't intend to say all of this honestly, I didn't. I, I wanted to be honest and <clears throat> quiet and nice about this. I can't help myself, I can't. And the way you look at me right now, that amazement, <coughs> that heartbreaking stupidity. Don't you ever feel that there is nothing between us anymore in the way of real feelings, tenderness, love? We are dead, dead as doornails. Move, think. Speak like puppets, making us 
same gestures every day, the same words, same kisses. Day in the carriage, sinister. The same. The same. Everything was the same. The coachman's boots behind the little window.
something the matter with me. No. Do you understand now why I must go away? Well, if I were to come into the bathroom with my head full of love lyrics like you, only to see you rubbing your face with skin food or shaving your armpits, I don't think I would have been overcome by any wave of tenderness for you, but I wouldn't go live in a boarding house. That was not the point. The point was what you said. That I could tell him where to put them. Are you sure that was the point? Why? Well, who wrote those poems you were talking about? Well, that boy. That boy who keeps asking you what you think about his work. You liked what he wrote, didn't you? Yes. I thought it young. Promising. Honestly, it had something so. So. Well. Well, what? Well, I seem to remember this same description some 23 years ago. You are trying to tell me that I'm in love again, are you? I won't say another word to you. The very idea that I, with a boy like that, such. <clears throat> it's just that that boy has talent. Hmm. At least as much as you had when you were still rhyming about gazelles with golden horns. I was rhyming about you. Well, he must be rhyming about something Of as course well. he is, about you too. Me? What did he write on the title page? Dedicated in reverent admiration to the woman who inspired my master. Well, I have been his master only insofar as that I wrote him a letter. Dear sir, I have read your poems twice. I suggest you do the same. <laughs> Still, I don't know. Perhaps I'm old fashioned. He is new school and all that. I would like to read those poems again. Have you got them here? Yes. Well, where are they? <coughs> you aren't going to make fun of them, are you? Fun? Why should I? Uh, I think this occasion is serious enough for both of us to find out exactly what we're talking about. <coughs> well, perhaps you're right. Perhaps I need this lesson. Well, let's have it. foam, jetsam on the beach of youth. Hmm. That seems to cover quite a lot. Michael. First sonnet, nocturnal embrace. You're going to make a fool of that poor boy who's just starting out only because you... Who is doing the starting here? Me? After 30 years, I'm just starting to discover how difficult it is to write something worth reading. And I shall write something worth reading one day unless... First sonnet. Nocturnal embrace. We are lying in the double bed. On the windows have thrown a net. The dead leaves of an acorn tree. You understand why it has to be an acorn tree? Why not an oak? Because it's beautiful. Because it gives atmosphere. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. From a church tower far unseen, a solemn bell strikes twelve. Well, now, this rhyme could definitely be improved. From a church tower far unseen, a solemn bell strikes thirteen. A solemn bell strikes twelve. <laughs> Over the darkened fields, the silent sea. But then we start and clasp. A frightened, sickening gasp for a foot is stopped behind the door. Well, now, this I understand. No wonder they are startled. Suppose you were busy clasping one another, then a foot walks along the corridor and stops right outside your door. I'm not laughing if that's what you're after. Well, that's 
not what he was after in any case, but let's see how it ends. Silence. Thumping. It's our hearts waiting with our breath. Wondering where the other foot's got to, I Why suppose. Why don't you stop it? Why, am I his master or am I not? And has he got the cheek to dedicate this bad pornography to my Agnes, or has he and not? He it for the best. Oh, now, did he really? Do you call that for the best, to, to turn the head of a woman, the, the best wife any man could wish himself, at a moment when she's standing empty-handed because she imagines her job is over, to catch her at a time when she can't think of anything better to do than to become young again and start for a second time fashioning the first damn fool at hand into a writer like me? You don't need me anymore. Oh, no? Well, let me tell you something. People may buy my books by the thousands. They, they may write me letters and tell me how I broke their hearts and made them bawl their damn heads off. But I know the truth all right. It's you who makes me sing. And if I sing like a frog in a pond, it's not my fault. <laughs> I wanted to leave something. 
something friendly for that young couple. A sort of message. What message? <clears throat> I'd like to tell them how happy we've been. That it's been a very good bet. Invalids, a very 